With over 950 graves, Fort Knox's Post Cemetery in Central Kentucky is the final resting place for soldiers, family members, and others from across the nation. Perfect rows of unassuming white headstones stand beneath the nation's red, white, and blue banner as a symbol of their heroism. Among them is a headstone to a national hero whose actions at the start of the Korean War seem impossible to believe. Even more unbelievable, Master Sergeant Ernest Kuma lived to tell his tale of August 31, 1950, a long night that would forever change his small-town Nebraska mindset and earn him the nation's highest award for valor, the Medal of Honor. At the start of the war, Kuma was a tank commander with 4th Platoon of Company A's 72nd Tank Battalion, 25th Infantry Division. According to his citation, his unit was involved in supporting the infantry's march north in the Yongsong vicinity. Known as the First Battle of Naktong Bulge, part of the Battle of Pusan Perimeter, they were at the Naktong Riverfront near midnight of the 31st when an enemy force of about 500 crossed the river and launched a fierce attack of the dug-in infantry positions. The fighting forced commanders to call for a retreat. Kuma's armored troops were responsible for holding off the enemy while the infantry could retreat and set up a new defensive position. The enemy assault overran two of Kuma's tanks, destroying one and forcing another to withdraw. Kuma found himself alone, the only tank standing between 500 fierce North Koreans and the retreating infantrymen. He gave orders to his crew and remained in position throughout the night. The enemy kept coming and at one point they had his tank surrounded. So he leapt from his turret and manned the 50 caliber on the back of the tank, continuing the fight. When his machine gun emptied, he pulled out his pistol and with grenades continued to halt the enemy's advance. After more than nine hours of constant close combat, Kuma single-handedly forced the enemy to withdraw. As he and his men traveled the eight miles back to reestablish defensive positions, he continued to engage the enemy, knocking out three hostile machine gun positions with what ammo he had left. By the time Kuma and his crew returned, he had killed 250 enemy combatants, half of the original force. Though himself badly injured, Kuma insisted on staying to protect his men. He even attempted to resupply his tank and get back into the fight. Jim Reisdorf, a reporter from Butler County, interviewed Kuma several years ago during a planned parade in Kuma's hometown of Dwight, Nebraska. Reisdorf said Kuma was very reserved and humble about it all. The press often described him as a short, modest farm boy. Keeping true to being a man of few words, Kuma seemed to shun the spotlight when he could get away with it. According to Reisdorf, Kuma would have rather been out in the woods hunting and fishing, a passion he pursued after retiring in 1971 with 31 years of service when he took a job at Fort Knox as a game warden. Kuma continued his quiet, modest life in nearby McDaniels, Kentucky, until his death on December 19, 1993. A few places around here are named after him, but he will forever be remembered as that modest Nebraska farm boy who became an extraordinary hero when he refused to retreat in the face of certain death. Reporting for Fort Knox News, I'm Eric Pilgrim.